Here are 27 pieces of advice for better saxophone practice. No zero days. On days when you can't get a full practice session in, just five to 10 minutes of long tones and scales will help prevent you from losing progress. Rotate reads. Make sure you always have multiple good reads in rotation. This will prevent you from having to jump from a worn out old read to a new one, which will feel much harder. This way you'll also always know which reads are best for that next performance. Practice in all 12 keys. It's important to learn all your scales in all 12 keys. If you're pursuing improvisation or concert performance at a high level, you'll eventually need to be able to perform in all 12 keys just as easily as you can play in C major. Maintain your instrument. Very basic maintenance like using a swab to remove moisture after playing can extend the life of your pads and prevent costly maintenance. Multiphonics aren't just Chewbacca noises. <laughs> Multiphonics are an extended technique where we use false fingerings to make multiple pitches resonate in the instrument at the same time. It can be a harsh sound, but with some control over this technique, they can be an excellent laboratory for expression and developing really precise control over the voicing. Japanese composer Ryo Noda even has a piece entitled Requiem, which is entirely multiphonics. He directs the player what fingerings to use and which pitches to get to speak at any given moment. And it is hard. An easy one to get started with is low C without the right hand first finger. Try playing it loud to see what it sounds like, but then see how many different notes you can get at one time, similar to overtone practice. Learn the alternate fingerings. Alternate fingerings for F sharp, C, and D can make trills easier, and they can often make technical passages easier to play. Lester Young and other players from the early jazz era would frequently use the palm key D instead of the D over the break because its timbre matches the lower register better and it's easier to bend in expressive ways because of less resistance. Like and subscribe for more content like this. Long tones, long tones, long tones. No matter how many times your teacher has told you to practice long tones, you probably aren't doing it as much as you could be. Just a few minutes of long tones every day, concentrating on the timbre and intonation of the middle register, the low notes, and the high notes, will make a huge difference in your sound. Very often, saxophone players are very sharp in the palm key register and have little to no dynamic control over the notes below low D. Working on this will set you apart from the crowd. I have a video here outlining my three favorite tone exercises. And if you're more experienced, you should include overtones in your practice routine. My intro to overtones video is right here. Use a f***ing metronome. Use a real metronome or an app on your phone or tablet to keep track of how fast you're practicing your music and to force yourself to slow down. Playing something five times in a row with no mistakes at 50 beats per minute is much better and hacking your way through it at 70 beats per minute with error. Practice slower. I make my students play a game where they pick the tempo where they think they'll be able to play something, and every time they make a mistake in that etude or piece, they have to slow the metronome down by two or four beats per minute. Usually by the time they've turned it down one or two clicks, there's no more mistakes. Practice playing with zero mistakes from the get-go. If you put a really hard piece of music in front of me, something that looks like this, I'm gonna start by moving my fingers through the notes at a speed where I won't miss any before I even try to play it. With some practice, you'll find that this will allow you to sight read with few or no mistakes. Notes and rhythms are only the beginning. Let's say you bring in a new etude for a lesson and you can play the whole thing with the right rhythms and the right notes. Does that mean it's ready to perform? No, there's a lot more to it. Phrasing, dynamics, intonation, breathing in the correct place, overall musicality. These are what set a performance apart and make it musical. Prepare for auditions like an athlete. There's an audition coming up. How can you ensure that what you play in that room will be as good as your best practice session? Try doing physical exercise like jump rope, body weight, body weight squats, or push-ups before you play a piece with an elevated heart rate to simulate nervousness. Try practicing when you're really sleepy or after a very long day when you don't want to practice. Have a little bit of extra caffeine and a sugary snack before a practice session to see how you can play when you're kind of jittery. This will sort of simulate the effect of nerves at an audition. Don't be too hard on yourself. Don't beat yourself up if you miss a day or if you're having a bad day in the practice room. Consistency doesn't mean 100% every day. There will be days that feel like 30% and there are days that feel like you're giving 110% of your effort and playing better than ever before. The fact that you care about getting better and not missing more than a day at a time is what will carry you for the long term. Record yourself. You don't sound how you think you sound. From tone to timing and dynamics, you need to hear from the audience perspective. 
20 years ago, this was expensive and difficult, but now you have a very high quality recorder and camera in your pocket at all times. Record yourself playing etudes and pieces several times a week to track your progress and keep track of what sections need the most work. Every time I record myself, I find something that I can make better or more musical. It allows you to be your own teacher. Listen to great saxophone players. Learning to play saxophone without listening to the greats is like trying to learn to paint without going to art museums. After this video, type John Coltrane or Glazunov Concerto into the search bar and listen to what it sounds like when a great player is playing some music that you're working on. Compose etudes for yourself. Whenever you pinpoint a musical or technical challenge in a piece of music that you're working on, try writing an etude that will force you to do things that are very difficult over and over again. This is a great way to develop a niche ability or technique that will set you apart or to patch up holes in your playing. Here's an etude I wrote to work on crossing the altissimo break while also working on some unusual harmonic devices. Practice the hard parts. If you can play 70% of a piece quite well, then don't waste too much of your practice time running through that section. This can be hard because it is fun to play through music that we play well, but that's not what practice time is for. Spend most of your time on that 30% that's causing trouble. This means lots of repetitions, slow, with a metronome. Then playing it musically without a metronome and finally incorporating it into the whole piece. It is important to practice playing the whole piece from start to finish without stopping as well. Reed placement. Learn the default placement for reeds, about half a millimeter to a millimeter below the end of the mouthpiece, but then experiment. I find that older or slightly too soft reeds can play better when they're moved up a little further to be even with the tip of the mouthpiece or even slightly past the tip, and vice versa. If a reed is too hard, moving it down a little more can help because it means less of the thick part of the heart of the reed is over the resonating chamber. Gear is a sinkhole for money. If you're unsatisfied with your sound, make sure you're spending enough time listening to the greats and practicing long tones before spending hundreds of dollars on new mouthpieces, necks, or instruments. That being said, sometimes a gear change, especially from, for example, a student mouthpiece to a handmade one, can make a huge difference. And cheap instruments are generally just not adjusted well and may have leaks that no one's willing to fix. Just make sure you maximize what you have before throwing hundreds of dollars at equipment. And find a place where you can try lots of different mouthpieces or instruments before making a big investment. Have fun. With competitions, auditions, and performances always around the corner, practicing or playing can become a source of stress. It's important to remember that the reason human beings love and create music goes back to joy, community, and self-expression. When you're feeling down or stressed about playing, try to come back to what sparked your interest in music in the first place. For me, it was hearing my dad play Somewhere Over the Rainbow on a tenor saxophone when I was nine, and then sitting down and playing a bunch of John Coltrane and Sonny Rollins CDs for me. This goes hand in hand with improvise freely every day. One of the best ways to engage with the self-expression element of playing any instrument is to just let yourself play freely. This could be with a drone or just over silence. It allows you to find where you want to drift naturally musically, find things you want to work on in your practice session, and can be a great source of joy and inspiration. Get a private instructor. At the end of the day, even self-taught players have to find a mentor to achieve great levels of play. I believe that having a private teacher from day one is the best way to prevent the formation of bad habit. If the practice time and the effort and your love for music is the wind in the sails, then a great teacher is like the captain steering the ship of your musical development. Practice scales in different subdivisions from quarter notes up to septuplets. Use tuning drones. Tuners and apps are great for checking your pitch before playing with others, but at performance time, there is no visual indicator. Your ears have to know if you're sharp or flat. Playing long tones with a tuning drone is a great way to work on this, and not just unison. So if you put on a B-flat tuning drone, you should play other intervals, like the major third and minor third above or below that, because these intervals are very common in harmony parts, and you want to be able to tune to the people you're playing with. Practice the extreme registers. You should be able to play the palm key notes and the notes below low D just as comfortably as the middle register. The sooner you stop thinking of these ranges as the extremes, the better. And if you're a more advanced player, this goes for altissimo as well. Practice your scales into that range, going over the break. Embrace the free resources online, not just YouTube videos either. The Universal Method for Saxophone, many other method books and etude books are available online for free thanks to public domain law and fair use. You can check sites like IMSLP and archive.org for these types of resources. And in terms of recordings, pretty much every great recording of all time is available on YouTube for free. I hope you find some of these tips helpful. 
like and subscribe for more content like this. And let me know in the comments which of these topics you'd like to see a deeper dive on. 